Hey guys, it is Sunday, and welcome back to the uh, second video for our lovely um, series that will be starting this week alone um, for the channel. This is uh, day two of Sarah's Battlefront 2 week on the channel, and today we're going to be discussing, after yesterday's video, we discussed uh, what plans and systems I believe that absolutely needed to be in the game, and in today's video we're going to be discussing um, the heroes and or villains that absolutely need to be in the game. So, um, there's going to be a couple heroes that I'm not going to even give the life story on because you guys already know the life story but some of them I believe they deserve a little bit of a backstory so I kind of um and will give my reasoning as to why I want them in the game because obviously you know, it's important for them to get backstory if I want them in the game but um the first character we're gonna be talking about is uh, Anakin Skywalker and uh, he is it's like it's, as a if he's not in the game it's not even best Star Wars Battlefront so Anakin Skywalker needs to be in the game confirmed we already know he's basically a Sith Lord Darth Vader who eventually became Darth Vader that's no secret but Anakin Skywalker needs to be in the game. Next up, we have a what I do believe is an honorable mention, but I think it could be a uh, decent character to put in the game. Maybe as a um, a DLC character, but a uh, Bail Organa, who is the voice for of Alderaan, and uh, he is indeed the first survivor of the Jedi um, assault that took place in the temple after uh, Anakin turned to the dark side and began um, being a douche knocker. But, um, yeah, so uh, Anakin turns the dark side, attacks the temple, and uh, Bail Organa was the first known survivor of the, of the attack. Obviously, we know Yoda survived, but um, he wasn't kind of a known survival until after he had um, basically radioed Bail Organa to say, like, you know, pick my ass up because the Emperor just kicked my ass. But, um, yeah, but uh, that's pretty much the backstory on uh, Bail Organa. And obviously, we know that he would eventually be the daughter, or not daughter, while well, way wrong. Eventually, we know he would be the father of uh, Princess Leia Organa after he adopted her when uh, Padme was pushing up daisies. But um, that's all I have for Organa. We're going to move on to our next character. We have uh, Jango Fett. I do apologize because I do believe in yesterday's video, I got Jango Fett and Boba Fett confused. I was saying um, that Boba Fett was the guy before and that Jango Fett was the guy after. But actually, um, Jango Fett was the guy who got beheaded by Count du or beheaded by Mace Windu, not uh, Boba Fett. So I do apologize. So it's Jango Fett that should be in this game, not Boba Fett. Um, I'm speaking of Count Dooku, who he's next. Um, as you know, Count Dooku is the leader of the Separatists and the leader of the droid army. Um, not entirely the leader of the droid army. He basically oversees the droid um, policies. And um, moving on from there, we have Darth Maul, which... If they put him in the game, I really hope they do. He's going to be an interesting character to play as. And he is one of the most dangerous and highly trained Sith we've ever seen. Um, and that's in the history of the Sith Order. We obviously know he's skilled under the trained arts of um, Darth Sidious, who is Emperor Palpatine, who is a two-faced bitch. Um, next up, we have General Grievous, who is a cyborg. And because he is a cyborg, General Grievous actually is now the Force-sensitive... Um, which is kind of interesting, or nor is he a Sith. He is not a Sith, guys. He's a Separatist, and he is the Supreme Commander of the Droid Army. And um, he is trained by a Sith, but he is not actually a Sith. He's a Separatist leader. But because he's a cyborg, he, he can't use the Force because he's a fucking robot. Um, obviously, that is very clear. And um, But his lightsaber skills were trained from Count Dooku because obviously we know he carries four lightsabers, which aren't the greatest thing in the world if you suck with all four of them. But um, moving on to some couple of honorable mentions here, we have Kiedi Mundi, um, who is a member of the Jedi Council, and he was involved in the attack um, my Gito when Order 66 was enabled and uh, wiped out most of the Jedi, which is kind of sad. Um, obviously, there's a lot of these kind of alien-looking Jedi that were on the council, and uh, they weren't exactly they weren't exactly well known, but they're still pretty major in in, in the storyline. Next up, we have another Jedi most people don't know about, but we have Kit Fisto. Uh, he was involved in the uh, Geonosis attack and became a master of the council. Uh, he can actually live in air and water, um, which is surprising because of his tentacles. And uh, he was actually slayed by Upper Palpatine. Which you guys already know, this was in Revenge of the Sith, obviously. He was one of the three guards that uh, Mace would have brought with him to uh, try and apprehend Palpatine. To try and, uh, you know, put him in jail. And, um, yeah, Kit Fisto was one of the few men that were there to uh, try and try and uh, take the Emperor into um, prison. And uh, that didn't work out very well for them. Because, obviously, we know he wasn't going to, uh, you know, give up his power. But, um, moving on here, we have, um, the one and only Mace Windu, one of the best Jedi Masters that have ever been created in, in the history of, 
uh, Mankind and his purple lightsaber, which is the greatest thing ever. And uh, he's just an absolute boss. And I just, I really hope they put him in the game, man, because he's just, he's just a phenomenal character. And he just needs to be in there. But, um, we obviously know Mace Windu is probably one of the heads of the Jedi Council, along with Yoda. So it would be no brain to put him in. I would not be surprised if he put in the game, and I wouldn't see why the reason why he shouldn't be. And then moving on here, we have Obi-Wan Kenobi, who did also, like Anakin, does not need uh, a side story at all. He is one of the few men who has stayed true to the Jedi Order, and uh, have not betrayed it, unlike his uh, just bitch of a brother, uh, Anakin Skywalker. But uh, that's all for him. Uh, we have Padme Amidala, or I can't say her name, Padme Amidala, sorry, who is the Naboo Queen and the Senator. Um, and obviously we know she is Anakin's love interest, and or will be the mother of his children even though she won't ever know her children, which is unfortunate. And uh, obviously we know Anakin. Anakin, didn't, he didn't really kill her. He more of choked her up just to give her a little bit of explanation as to why he's so pissed off about what's going on. But uh, it's not her fault that Obi-Wan snuck into her ship at the end of Revenge of the Sith. She had no idea. It wasn't her clan. It was an accident. Oh my god, there's so many people coming after me right now. Holy shit. But um, yeah, so Obi-Wan is just, you know, he's just, it was just in a bad moment at a bad time. There's something I can do about that. But um... Next up, we have Plo Koon, who is a Jedi High Council member, and um, he had actually discovered the young Jedi Master, Ahsoka Tano, who a lot of you guys who uh, used to watch the animated series Star Wars The Clone Wars will know that she was a very vital part of that story. I don't watch Star Wars Rebels, but I, I'm, if she's in there, someone let me know in the comments below. But Ahsoka Tano is a, um, she is a very, very, very important part of the Star Wars universe, and a very important part of Star Wars Rebels, for that matter. And, um... Yeah, but uh, she also fought over uh, Kanedo. She has fought over. K uh, no, sorry, this is not Ahsoka. This is Plocoon. Plocoon fought over Kato Minamoria uh, when Order 66 was issued, and, and uh, obviously Plocoon was one of the members of um, the terrible onslaught of Order 66. And Kato Minamoria is going to be one of my topic videos for the DLC. We'll get into that in a couple days. Um, that, that being one of my favorite parts of the Star Wars Expanded Universe. But, um, yeah, I really love that fucking place. I think it's really cool. And, um, I, I will have a little bit of theory on why I think that, that should be a DLC, but a Plo Koon was actually flying over, um, he was flying over Kato Nemordia with his, um, rebel, or, yeah, the clone trooper, um, scouts when the Order 66 was issued by Palpatine, and unfortunately they, you know, they branched off and killed him, which is unfortunate. And then moving on here to the last few guys, we have Qui-Gon Jinn, who we know is the master and master of our, um, famous, uh, Jedi Obi Wan Kenobi, and uh, everyone's you know been a good old fashioned uh, bodyguard or a good old fashioned you know uh, everyone has their own sort of training and everyone gets trained by somebody and he got trained by uh, Obi Wan got trained by Qui Gon and uh, Qui Gon was obviously f few people know this but a lot of people do a lot of my Star Wars buddies do that Qui Gon was actually part of like Count Dooku and uh, Count Dooku tried getting um. Uh, he tried getting Qui-Gon to join the dark side, and that's where Qui-Gon's, you know, Jedi powers came from. He just basically, he had, he had, he had a lot of metachlorians, and he didn't want to become a member of the dark side. But, strong enough, despite how good of a Jedi Qui-Gon is, he is not on the Jedi Council, because of the problem with his, um, he has used... He uses risk and action when doing situations with just overall just combat. Like, he, he's risk and action and uh, risk and reward. And the council doesn't like his sort of recklessness, if you will call it that. And that's why he was not a member of the council, because of his risk and recklessness. And uh, so that's kind of interesting to think about. But um, moving on here, we got um, Shock T, who a lot of people have no idea who the fuck she is. She's actually really a uh, quite interesting character. She was... Um, I, think, I do believe she is the leader and or one of the senior protectors of Felucia, which is one of my favorite planets of all time. And uh, I'm going to get into that and why that should be a DLC too um, the other day. Um, and um, yeah, Felucia is a nice, colorful alien planet with all these alien life plants and everything. It's r one of my favorite planets just because of how bright it is and how cool it looks. And it's also in the Fortune Unleashed, which is one of my favorite games. But uh, Shock T is um, a female Jedi. She's a Jedi Master. And uh, she was actually killed by Darth Vader's apprentice, Starkiller, um, on Fallujah, which is kind of sad because she's a great Jedi, but the story of Starkiller is a fantastic story. I mean, you got this young Jedi who was brought up by Darth Vader, and he ended up getting betrayed because we know Darth Vader does not, you know... Darth Vader does not do his job with, with, with being a, a master. You're like, oh, I'm gonna... 
you know, train you, but then after the uh, this emperor guy suspects that you might be a traitor, I'm just going to stab you in the chest right behind your back. And uh, all your training is going to be, you know, absolutely nothing, which is kind of an annoying. But um, moving on to our last two guys here, we got Yoda, who is uh, 900 years old, you know, well, technically not anymore, he's technically deceased. Um, and um, we know that he eventually would hide on Dagobah after his uh, issues with Emperor Palpatine. And uh, he'd go into hiding in Dagobah to kind of forget that, and uh, that's when uh, the training of Luke Skywalker would become part of you know, Yoda's seen some things. He's got some PTSD over there. I mean, he, he almost got asked by the Emperor, and he's seen some shit. But uh, moving on here to our last uh, character of the day. This is another bounty hunter, and what, one thing that makes me happy, there aren't that many bounty hunters in the original series compared to the last three episodes. So um, that's going to help them out with not being too lazy with characters, I hope. But uh, one bounty hunter that I probably would like to see in the game just because she's got an interesting body trait is Zom Weasel. And we know her from episode 2, Attack of the Clones. And this is um, the girl who has the ability to shape change her body. She's a shape changing assassin. She can uh, take the form of other things like, um, you know, she takes the form of like some kind of like, it kind of looks like some kind of like alien type uh, animal. It's kind of weird. But um, she can take the shape of him, we know. And uh, it's kind of interesting. And uh, she was also, we also know that she's got affiliation with Jingle Fett, who I confused with Boba Fett last video. And I still do apologize for that. It wasn't my intent. But uh, we know Jango Fett and Boba Fett, um, our brother and or it's, uh, son and uh, son and father, and I can't say this, speak those words. But um, yeah, I can't help but um, I can't help but hope the Zam Zamwees will be in there. I think the shape changing assassin thing would be kind of cool. But I mean, it's not gonna really do much gameplay wise if you know you could change into like some kind of like well, if she changed into like her mind would be like run faster, possibly. And uh, obviously, you know, she's got poison darts, so that would be a um, or I think no, it, was it? Was it Jango Fett that shot the poison dart at her? It must have been. That made her turn. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more Battlefront 2 videos throughout the week. Tomorrow's video is going to be a topic video on everything I want from the single player campaign from this game. But um, if you guys have enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and subscribe. And stay tuned tomorrow for my thoughts and impressions on where I want from the campaign. But uh, yeah guys, see you later. Have a good one. May the force be with you.